Hello there everybody, Sam's Trains here, welcome back to the railway and welcome to my top 5 model trains of 2019. So first things first, I think if I've done my calculations correctly, I might be releasing this video on Christmas Day. So if you are watching on Christmas Day, and that's crazy stuff by the way, you need to have your head checked if you are actually watching on Christmas Day. Let me know down in the comments if you actually are. If you are, a very, very, very Merry Christmas to you. I hope you're having a fantastic day. If you're watching this after Christmas, have a Happy New Year and I hope you had a really fantastic Christmas Day. So let's get to the main order of business then. Already I have created a video about the worst trains of 2019. If you haven't seen that already, I will put a link to it up there for you. To be honest, I didn't think they were that bad. One or two of them definitely were, but for the most part, they certainly weren't that bad. But today we're doing something much more positive. If it's Christmas Day, we've got to be positive. And I'm going to show you the top five models I reviewed this year. Now, before we get started, the first really interesting thing is that they are all brand new releases. Now, it's from my entire list of um, reviews from this year, not a lot of which are new releases. However, every single engine in that top five was a new release for this year, which is really impressive. So I'm going to grab the first engine today of today. This is number five. It is the Peckett B2 from Hornby, and I just think this is an astonishing model. It does well in basically every category. But the first really great thing about these, and it has nothing to do really with the models themselves, but it's really to do with the versatility. There are quite a lot of different versions of these available, and actually I bet you money that, uh, well, whether it's in January's uh, announcements or not, I don't know, but I bet you anything that Hornby will produce more different versions of this, which means that basically if you've got an industrial layout or if you've got a layout um, on which an industrial loco will be halfway suitable, then these locos are probably going to be fine for you. But besides that, they are absolutely superb models. In fact, let me count the ways. So first of all, the number of features versus the price is really quite impressive. To begin with, they are offering DCC fitted versions of this relatively inexpensively. So if you want it, you can just buy it DCC fitted and you haven't got to faff about. So I think that's a really good feature worth mentioning. Besides that though, provided you're just buying the DC only versions, you can pick these up for £99 from Hattons. And for that price, you get quite a lot for your money. First of all, you get an awful lot of die cast on this. The entire boiler and most of the running plate, and obviously the chassis, are all made of heavy metal, which gives this loco an awful lot of weight. And obviously because of that, it just feels great in the hands. The level of detail is astonishing as well. I mean, check out my review if you'd like to see the extent of the intricate level of detail on this. But I suppose the areas that stand out uh, would be the cab. Really, really fantastic cab on this. There are some tiny little details, as you can see, including the pipework and reversing rods. And generally, the decoration on these is superb as well, which once again, for the money, is really, really impressive. The performance is absolutely wonderful as well. As you might expect, the massive weight of these locos does translate pretty nicely into great pulling power, which is fantastic. It means that they will be able to handle any load you throw at them, really. And they also just run so nicely. Mine has a wonderful slow speed. It doesn't care about points, even express points with insul frogs. It really is a fantastic runner. I believe they've only got three pole motors inside them, but that doesn't seem to matter. They can do a great crawl and they still have a great range of speeds. Ultimately though, it's just the quality. Because of all the metal, because of the high level of detail, because of the sturdiness of it, it just feels like a fantastic model. And that's why, as you can see, I gave it such a high score of 9.54 out of 10. It's hard to imagine any loco that would be better than this uh, this year. However, there are one or two, so let's get to number four. So number four is once again from Hornby, but it's a completely different locomotive, really. Still a steam one. It is this, the J36, the version I've got here, is moored. It is a little bit like the B2 in that it succeeds in loads and loads of categories. So as you can see, the decoration is just superb. I love the lining. 
The level of detail is incredible as well. In fact, there are quite a lot of wow features with this one. It's got the sprung buffers, it's got the valve gear between the frames, which looks wonderful. You've got a very, very detailed cab, which I really like. And a detail that I happen to really enjoy is the tender. This has to be one of my favorite tenders. It just looks so ornate and old fashioned, doesn't it? Absolutely love that tender. It's also got this sort of art deco, I don't know, streamlined look to it, which I think is fascinating. Really, really enjoyed the tender on this for some bizarre reason. Yeah, it just looks great, doesn't it? Also, for barely £50 more than the B2 Peckett, this cost £148 something, I think that's what I paid for it. There are an awful lot of features. Let me tell you about one or two of them here. So, first of all, you get the die-cast boiler. This is not a very regular occurrence with locos of this size, but there's an awful lot of metal work on this. As I say, the entire boiler is made of metal, as is the running board. And once again, that gives the loco an awful lot of weight to the point where it doesn't require a traction tyre or anything like that to be a good puller. And it is a good puller, but we'll talk about that later on. Also, of course, for that money, not only do you get a DCC decoder installed, but you get full sound on this. Well, it's TTS sound, but it is full sound, really. And I think, given that the decoders cost about £30, generally speaking, that is a fantastic price. So we're only talking just over £100, really, for the Loco itself. Astonishing. Another fantastic inclusion is the snowplow, as you can see. This is not part of the model. This came separately for free. And as you can see, I fitted mine. And just what a wonderful feature that is. I don't have very many. In fact, I don't have any Locos, I don't think, that have a snowplow, an optional snowplow to fit, which came free with the model. So that's wonderful. The final feature I love about this is the mechanism. It's just a gorgeous mechanism. We've got full tender pickups, a five pole skew wound motor inside the Loco. Despite its size, it's got a fantastic beefy motor inside there all wheel pickup full bearings on the wheel set it's just a gorgeous gorgeous piece of kit fantastic quality and wonderful for the money i really am a huge fan of this one honest to god it's also wonderful on the track as well the sound works excellently it's very very smooth and as i said thanks to all of that die cast on the loco itself it's got an awful lot of power so it's amazing really in fact the only thing that it really fell down on was some of the decoration um yeah particularly around the windows as you can see there's a bit of misalignment going on there but it's a relatively minor issue on what is besides that an absolutely fantastic loco so what did i give this i gave this one 9.63 out of 10 probably one of my personal favorites from the year absolutely love it so that is one for you if you like it um, check out the link down in the description because these are now available for something like 120 pounds now that is crazy you must get one for that it's just bonkers so there we are the j36 a gorgeous model let's move on then and take a look at loco number three so the next model is one that I would consider revolutionary. I reviewed it only very recently, and it is this, the Hatton's Class 66. And I think it's revolutionary, really, just on the sheer level of detail. If you haven't seen my review on this already, do check it out. I will include a link. But in summary, here are some of the wonderful features that the new Hatton's Class 66 has. So the first revolutionary thing, and it's not really to do with the model, arguably, but it is still pretty impressive. And I was talking to Jack from Hatton's about this earlier, but it is the sheer number of different versions Hatton's are producing of these. So if you forget all of the DCC sound versions and the DCC fitted versions, if we're just talking about liveries and running numbers alone, there are 37 different versions, which are all going to be released at roughly the same time. So that is crazy enough. However, they're doing the digital sound and the DCC CC fitted versions as well, which leaves 111 products in total. So the level of choice there is just absolutely amazing and it just makes it fantastic for the customer. Normally, if you want to get exactly the right loco, you'd have to do some customization. And obviously, Hattons aren't producing every single Class 66 that ever existed, so I'm sure some people will still have to do that. But as far as the different liveries are concerned, Hattons have absolutely taken care of that for you, which is absolutely wonderful. Talking about the model itself, though, there's just so many impressive things to talk about, as you can just see looking at it here. The cab detail is one feature that really stands out. Absolutely immaculate cabs on those. The level of detail inside there is wonderful. 
The lighting is also extremely impressive. That's very customizable. There are six switches inside the Loco, plus more switches on the bottom, which allow you to get the lighting absolutely right. And of course, if you get one of the DCC fitted versions, you get even more control over the lighting. So again, the level of control given to the user in terms of lighting is pretty unprecedented so far in model railways. Next up is the rotating axle boxes, which again is a revolutionary feature that works really, really well. My particular sample had issues, but I did talk to Hattons about this and they said that the production, the final versions of these models will have those axle boxes glued into place. So they will be perfect as far as I'm aware and I'm sure we will see that for ourselves when the models come out. But it's a very impressive feature and it's amazing how much realism a very simple feature like that can bring. Generally speaking, the level of exterior detail, particularly with the wiring and pipework, is just exquisite. It took my breath away when I first looked at it, and it is just so impressive. So visually, they're wonderful things. As well as that, though, they're priced very, very reasonably. They're about the same price as Maud, only £150, which means that Hattons have been able to bring us all of these features without setting massive, massive costs, which has to be applauded, I think. Hats off to Hattons there, I think, without a doubt. Performance also sets new standards as well. It's very, very rare to get a loco that is utterly silent. I was very impressed with that. But that's the least of it, really. The pulling power is astonishing. As I said in my review, I have never reviewed a loco with more pulling power than that without traction tyres. It is the most powerful diesel I've ever reviewed um, without traction tyres. Absolutely massive amounts of power from this. And so overall, it got 9.63 out of 10, as you can see there in my ratings. Although that's subject to change, because I think if Hattons do indeed fix that issue with the rotating axle boxes, which they have assured me they will be doing for the production model, I will be upping that score probably to a perfect 10 out of 10, which is not something I like to do, but I don't think I've got any choice. So the Hattons Class 66 is a very deserving third place there. Absolutely astonishing. So now we are getting into the top two, and loco number two is this. It is by Oxford Rail this time, and it is the N7. Now this model is quite special because it does a lot of what the previous models I've just shown you do, but for a fraction of the price. So I paid £87 for mine, and just to point that out, that is less than the packets, including the B2 packet, but also the 040 smaller packet as well. So when you consider that, that is incredible. But as I say, the features on this thing are just as good, so there's absolutely tons of die-cast. So the tanks, the coal bunker, the running plate, it's all made of metal, which gives this very inexpensive loco an incredible amount of weight. The paintwork is also reasonably complex as well for the price. True, some of the lining isn't as intricate as some of the other locos have been, and that is nothing to do with Oxford Rail, by the way. It is completely prototypical, it just so happens that some liveries are more complex in real life than others. But then again, well done Oxford for picking a livery that can be produced relatively inexpensively. I mean, again, hats off to them, really. The level of detail is also very impressive as well. There's some lovely features on this. The cab was very impressive, particularly the gauges, as you can see, which are fully painted. And there are also some pretty intricate, impressive details, such as this Westinghouse pump on the side of the smoke box there. I mean, for the price, the level of detail is surprising. I must say, absolutely incredible. What really makes this Loco shine, though, is the performance, because it runs unlike any other Oxford Loco I've had before. So Oxford are now using real top-quality motors, apparently, and it really does show. The slow speed was astonishing with this, and it also has an awful lot of power. Once again, just like every other Loco today has, because of the amount of die-cast, it really makes a huge difference. And of course, because of that, you can run massive trains with this thing, and it doesn't even break a sweat. And in fact, I have run massive trains with this. No problems with the motor, no wheel slip, to be honest with you. It's just a fantastic, fantastic performer. And it's baffling how Oxford were able to do this for the price. And so as a result of that, I gave it a very high score. I gave it 9.73 out of 10. Like I say, it's just so impressive that Oxford were able to do this for the price. And it just makes me so excited to see what Oxford can do in the future. However, that is not all we're going to be hearing from Oxford today because there is one more place in today's video, the top loco of the day, which is confusing because it's not just a loco, it is in fact a train pack. There's a little clue, I'm sure you could see it coming. But let's get to it, number one slot. 
Okay, so here we are at the number one slot. This is the product that achieved the highest score on my rankings this year, and it is this, the Oxford Rail Boom 01, I think it was, train pack, which specifically includes this Bosch Buster railgun and this beautiful Dean Goods Great Western locomotive in the khaki livery. Now, this, to be honest with you, ticks all of the boxes that you could possibly think of. It cost me £139 from Hattons, that's what it's cost, which is £10 less than Maud. And so if you think about that, you get a loco that's relatively similar to Maud in terms of its size. Of course, you don't get the TTS sound with this one, but instead you get this, the gigantic railgun. So as you can probably imagine, the value for money here is absolutely incredible. Before these were announced, if you told me that I'd be getting this for, I don't know, less than £200, I suppose, I would probably tell you to go away and stop messing around. It's just that astonishing, isn't it? So we've got two products here really to talk about. The first one then being the railgun, as you can see there. First of all, it's incredibly unique. There really is nothing else like it, both in terms of appearance, in terms of size, and also in terms of the quality and reliability, really. So yeah, as you can see, it's decorated fantastically. The quality of the camouflage livery on this is very, very good indeed, especially given its size. All of this makes the price very, very impressive indeed, of course. There's an awful lot of detailing as well, the complexity of the detailing, particularly with this rigging and some of the handrails and all of it really, the wiring, is incredibly, incredibly impressive. Very, very cool stuff. The most impressive thing for me though was the reliability on the track. When I saw the size of this thing and when I saw the different moving parts on it, I thought, oh my goodness, this thing is going to be a nightmare on the track. Even if it handles the curves and point work, it's going to be crashing against the scenery just because of the size of it. But it really doesn't. I think there's one tree on my layout that it touches as it goes along. It never derails on point work. It's absolutely fine. Second radius curves, it's absolutely fine. You name it, nothing I can do except couple it to a low coat that is too close to the buffers. But besides that, nothing I can do will make this derail, which is so impressive. So I love the rail gun. The Dean Goods loco is very, very impressive too, as you can see. I mean, just look at it. That khaki livery, once again, is very, very unusual. It also has a fantastic level of detail. There's quite a lot of impressive things to see here, including the cab, which is a very exposed cab, so I'm glad that's so nicely detailed. But for the money, it's not bad at all, is it? There are one or two missing details, such as the valve gear between the frames, but besides that, it's a really, really decent loco. I do think it's the rail gun that makes this train pack shine most of all, but the loco more or less can't be faulted either. This also runs particularly nicely. It's much better than previous releases of the Oxford Dean Goods locomotive because it's had an update to the motor, making it run basically just as well as the new N7 does. It's a fantastic, fantastic performer. And so, obviously, the overriding theme here is value for money. Not only is it incredibly inexpensive as a train pack, but it also delivers exactly what it needs to. It ticks all of the boxes, and because of that, I think it does deserve top spot on this year's rating. So there we go, my top five models slash products slash train packs or whatever of 2019. Do let me know down in the comments what you thought, what would be your top model of 2019. Well, I'd be very interested to know. But for now, you enjoy the rest of Christmas Day if you are watching on Christmas Day, and I will see you very soon for some more videos. Well, thanks for watching, folks, and I will catch you very soon. Cheers, everybody.